What's up YouTube, Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about ways that you can make your warmups more effective so you can be ready to perform when it counts. When it comes to warming up, you know, there's a few different reasons that we warm up. First of all, obvious by the name, is to warm up, raise our core temperature. This takes only about eight to 10 minutes of sustained activity to do. So once you're through that initial period of the warm up, then you're no longer really seeking just an improvement in body temperature you're trying to get some other things to kick in. So one of those might be tuning in motor qualities and coordination. You know, when you get out of bed, you're probably not as coordinated as you are after you've pounded some caffeine, done a bunch of exercises on the track, and you're doing your warm-up accelerations. You're gonna be more coordinated then than you were when you woke up. So the warm-up is an opportunity to tune in our coordinative systems, tune in our motor qualities, and really, you know, get technically into a better state than we were prior to the warm-up. The other thing it's gonna do is increase our force outputs and the velocities we can attain compared to when we weren't warmed up. So after you've gone about warming up your body, getting your core temperature up, tuning in the coordination, getting those systems revved up, you're also revving up your force output qualities and your velocity qualities. And last but not least, warm-ups give us an opportunity to sort of do a state of readiness check. So say you're warming up and you just don't feel like you know, you have that, uh, that extra gear that day, that's something to take into account and you can modify the workout accordingly. Maybe you feel great. Maybe you've got a little bit of an injury you didn't realize that started to pop up only once you hit certain velocities. What you learn in the warm-up can help make a better session for you by modifying the workloads depending on how well the warm-up goes. Now, I'm not saying every workout should be changed based on the warm-up, but there are times where when you feel something in a warm-up, you can then use that information that you gained to make a better session for yourself. Say you have a problem where your hamstrings hurting really bad out of nowhere and you didn't realize it before the session. Well, as you warm up, you can think, hmm, maybe I'm gonna do dribbles today instead of sprints. Or maybe I'm not gonna do those all out sprints and I'm just gonna sort of go through the motions. Maybe you skip it all and you just go straight to the gym to work on something else. But the warm up gives you an opportunity to figure out where you're at for that day so you can be safe and make the most effective session possible. Now, as far as improving our warmups and making them more effective, the first thing we can do is add resistance to our warmups. So this could be in the form of ankle weights, it could be in the form of mini bands, it could be in the form of K bands. There's all kinds of different things we can use, but by adding resistance to the exercises that we do and the drills that we do in our warmup, you'll probably warm up faster, you'll feel you know, a greater sense of activation in the muscles that you're working, and you also are able to get a little bit of a general strength stimulus from doing these exercises by adding a little bit of weight. So for example, say you're doing some abduction, some adduction, some hip flexion, some hip extension, you know, different ground-based and maybe standing in place types of exercises early in your warm-up. Well, you could add an ankle weight to these, do them at a, you know, a, a low to moderate speed of movement and be able to get a little bit more out of those movements as compared to if you weren't doing them with that ankle weight. Similarly, say once you move on to drills that are done at a higher velocity, you could add bands, which are not only gonna give you some resistance so you can work on that general strength and give you that greater activation when you're warming up, but it can also, going back to that idea of tuning into you know, the coordinative systems of the body, if you use an elastic type of resistance like, like K bands or mini bands, say when you're doing an A run or an A skip, those bands, because you're reaching max tension at the end of the range of motion, they're gonna force you to reverse your limbs and get you a better idea of what it feels like to switch your limbs uh, as compared to if you weren't using those bands. So they're not only gonna give you that general strength stimulus and give you that greater activation as compared to doing them without any resistance, but they can help tune you into those elastic types of movements that we wanna see and help you you know, tune into what it feels like to reverse your limbs as opposed to just go, you know, leg up, leg down, leg up, leg down. We wanna see that switching type of motion and you can improve that switching type of motion or at least tune into that by using bands in your warm up. Maybe you have someone who doesn't even know how to switch. Well, they might be someone to try this with as well because it could be a learning opportunity for them. You work on it in the warm up, and then you say, all right, now we're done with that. We're gonna go on to the session and you can sort of precondition their brain to be in a state that allows them to move in a certain way by using these different types of resistance in your warm-up. Second on our list for today is utilizing banded joint distractions. So say you show up to practice and you feel like your ankle's jammed up or maybe your hip is jammed up 
and you just can't go through the full range of motion and it feels like there's maybe a like a you know some bones that are out of place or there's just some pressure that you're not sure of well you can do banded joint distractions to work on these for example if you have an ankle issue you can hook up a band to some you know a post or something like that and you stand with the band around your ankle and you just bend your knee and bend your ankle pumping as that band is pulling your the lower part of your tibia and fibula back you know directly straight back from your body that's going to help create space in that joint similarly you could do it around the hip with either a band pulling back a band pulling to the side and going through different hip flexion ranges of motion uh, there's all kinds of different ways that you can utilize these but these are going to give you an opportunity to help clear up some of those you know hard structures that are maybe getting a little impinged or getting a little bit close to one another more closer than what you want um, and by creating some space in the joints, there's a possibility that you could get improved fluid dynamics, maybe get some of those growth factors going in there. If they, if they haven't been able to access a certain part of the joint because there's been a, like a blockage between some of the bones or within the joint, maybe if you create some space, you can get some of those healing factors in there to help the health of the joint. I don't know that that's a fact, but theoretically it does sound good, right? But for sure what you can do is improve the range of motion, reduce some of the pain or the discomfort associated with a blocked joint, and you can really, you know, just do an exercise or two exercises at the beginning of your warm up utilizing these banded joint distractions, and they'll really help you if you're having one of these issues. Similarly, you could use uh, flossing or floss bands to help clear up if you have some tendon pain or some ligament pain, say in your ankle or your knee or something like that. Well, you can, you can wrap a floss band around that joint or around the muscle belly, go through some different ranges of motion, and you might find that that pain or that blocked range of motion starts to feel better after you take that band off. Uh, if you want to learn more about these, you can look up Kelly Starrett, or you can look at his uh, YouTube channel called The Ready State. It's, you know, it's got all kinds of information, all kinds of videos on these subjects, and after you do them a little bit, you'll see uh, that you know they are pretty helpful, so feel free to check that out. The third thing to discuss when it comes to improving your warm-ups is progressing the intensities and the velocities throughout the warm-up, especially with you know some consideration for progressing them relative to the workout that you're about to perform. So say you're doing a really high intense sprint session or high intensity sprint session and you want to get warmed up as best as possible, well, you probably want to start that warm-up with really general low intensity exercises at low velocities and then progress throughout the warm-up to higher intensities and higher velocities so that way you're ready to really you know, cook those sprints when it's time to do it. Now, if you were just doing a tempo workout that day, maybe you don't need to reach those intensities or those velocities in your warm-up and you could have a lower you know, a lower workload overall, uh, or you could just do different types of exercises, but however, however you set it up is, is up to you. But the idea is we want to increase the intensities and the velocities throughout the warm up, so that way we're, we're getting to whatever state we need to be in for the workout through the warm up. Now, uh, this may seem obvious, but some people really don't understand that you want to progress from slower to faster, from less intense to more intense throughout the warm up. Um, you know, you could theoretically just show up and start sprinting. It might work for some people. I've done it here and there and it's okay. But I do think there's some value in doing these more general lower intensity exercises first, progressing to the higher intensity, higher velocity exercises later, and also managing how intense you make the warm up based on how intense the session is going to be. If it's a more intense session, you got to hit, you know, higher velocities, higher intensities in the warm up to get ready for the session. If it's a lower intensity session, you don't need to do that. So keep that in mind that you want to progress just like we progress our training over time. We want to progress our warm up throughout the warm up uh, so that way we can be ready for the demands of either the workout that day or the competition that we're at. Fourth on our list is the concept of balancing the volume of how many drills you're doing and how much of those drills you're doing versus how many warm up runs you're doing and finding a good balance between those. You know, Earlier in the warm up, we do basic exercises, then we go into drills. The drills can help tune us into the movements of sprinting, give us a little bit of a, an opportunity to check in and make sure we're able to complete the workout that day by hitting certain ranges of motion, certain velocities. But once we've done those and we're, we're ready to go, that's when we wanna progress into doing accelerations, building from a lower intensity to a higher intensity throughout those warm up accelerations. Now, if all you do are all kinds of drills, and then you do four accelerations 
and then you do six accelerations or sprints for the main workout, you've only done 10 sprints that day, but you may have done 25 different drills, you know, or 10 different drills or whatever you did. Whereas if you do less drills and you do more warm up runs, you're going to give yourself an opportunity to work on technique, to feel what it's like to accelerate, even if it's really short, 10 meters, you're just taking a few steps, you're still tuning into what it feels like to accelerate. You still have an opportunity to work on some technical qualities. And I think, you know, the most specific warm up we could ever do would be progressing from really, really slow sprints to faster sprints throughout the warm up. So it's not that we don't want to leave drills out of our warm up. I think drills offer some unique, you know, qualities that are useful in a warm up. And that's why I use them and that's why I put them before the sprints. But I would suggest that you don't get too caught up in doing every drill in the book or being addicted to doing drills at the expense of doing warm up runs. Warm up runs and accelerations building in intensity each run and throughout the run are going to be more specific to the ultimate thing that you're doing that day, especially if you're a sprinter. And so I would consider balancing how many drills you do with how many warm up runs you're going to do and try to shift to doing more warm up runs than you are doing drills. Uh, if at all possible, you know, it might not work for you, but it's something at least to try because every time you do a warm up run, you're working on sprinting. Even if it's slower, you're still working on that general movement quality or general movement type of, you know, projecting off the ground, switching your limbs, all that good stuff. So consider balancing how many drills you do with how many warm up runs you do. So that way you can get the most out of your warm up and have it be as specific as possible within reason. Number five is emphasizing technique. I can't count how many times that I've seen someone show up to practice and do their warm up with really poor technique. You know, every time you do a warm up run, every time you do a drill, every time you do anything is an opportunity, even if you're walking across the room, it's an opportunity to work on technique in some way. Maybe it's just how you contact the ground. Maybe it's keeping your feet straight. Maybe it's keeping your posture in a good position, going through full range of motion with your arms you know, being reactive off of the ground. If you go through your warm up half heartedly, uh, you're not going to get the most out of it. Whereas if you're going into it, and you're trying to be perfect on every movement that you do, you're trying to be as technically sound as possible in all your drills and all your warm up accelerations. How do you think that's going to affect your your session when you go to actually do the workout, you're going to already be in the mindset and in the zone of moving with good quality exhibiting good technique, being reactive off the ground, you know, just being athletic in general, as opposed to if you go through the warm up and you're not, you know, you're just flopping all over the place, your posture looks like Gumby and it's just not good quality. Well, you're registering low quality efforts and low quality movements into your brain. And the more you do something, that's what your brain is going to remember. So if all you ever do are low quality warm ups, that's countless opportunities that you're wasting, which could be better spent on doing things that are of a higher quality from a movement perspective. So make sure that when you're doing your warm ups, you're emphasizing good quality, you're trying to be, you know, working within those fundamentals that we talk about, and making sure that you can get the most out of your warm up, as opposed to just wasting it. Yeah, you're getting warm. But if you're not doing things with good quality technique, that's not going to relate to sprinting and it's not going to transfer as well. If there is any transfer we can get, it's not going to transfer as well as if we were doing them with good quality technique and being disciplined and really, you know, ironing that into our brain that we need to move with good quality. Every time we move, we're athletes. It is our job to move with good quality. And that starts in the warm up. Now, the last tip I got here is keep track of your warm up. So as you're going through your off season, your preseason, and now you're into the competitive season, you want to make sure that you're tracking how much of whatever you do in your warm up, how much do you do, when do you do it, and also get sort of a timeline of how long that takes. So say you're at practice and you're doing speed work today. Okay, keep track of how many exercises did you do, say on the ground or for general mobility and all that stuff. How many drills did you do? How many warm up accelerations did you do? And how many sprints within the workout did it take before you reached your fastest times, or at least when, you know, how long it took or how many reps it took until you felt your best if you don't have a timing system. We don't want to just go from, you know, 
practicing all the time, not paying attention to how much we do in our warm-ups, and then go into a competition and expect us to be able to replicate the same exact warm-up we've been doing because it's been all over the place. We have no idea of whether we've done five warm-up accelerations, 10 of them, two of them, whatever. Once you go into a competition where you're gonna be more stimulated, you're gonna be more emotionally revved up because you're excited to run, maybe you're nervous, whatever it may be, you know, if you're nervous for the race that you're about to run, how do you, how do you think your warm-up's gonna be if you don't have a certain set thing that you stick to? It doesn't mean that every single time you warm up, you can only do four accelerations or you have to do 10 or you have to do five or whatever it is, but you wanna know what is the bandwidth within that you're normally operating within so that way you can replicate that when you might be a little bit more stressed out mentally and emotionally because you're out of meat. You don't wanna go to a meet and then be like, oh, how many drills did I do the other day? Oh, how many accelerations do I need to do? That should be sort of systemized or at least you should have some consistency with your warmups and by tracking your warmups and keeping track of, you know, okay, today I did this, today I did that, this is how I felt, this is how the session felt, this is how many runs it took me to reach my best sprint of the day, that gives you an opportunity to then have your best shot at running fast at a competition or jumping well at a competition because you know, okay, if I do five accelerations building in intensity and then I do two sprints max effort, I know that on that third or maybe the fourth sprint, that's when I run my fastest. So I'm gonna do that in competition, getting ready for that, you know, that race you're gonna run, as opposed to just throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks. You wanna know what it takes for you to get to your best, you know, state of readiness. And to do that, you have to track what you're doing, take some notes, keep a training log. So that way, not only are you keeping track of the workout itself, but you're also keeping track of what led to that workout and what led to you performing best within that workout. So guys, hopefully this gives you some idea of how you can maximize your warmups and get the most out of them, both for practice and for competition. You know, by adding some resistance, doing some joint distractions, focusing on your technique, and making sure that you're keeping track of what you're doing, you can have your best shot at performing well when it counts in competition, as well as maximizing the quality of your practices by making sure that you're in a good state of readiness for when it comes time to do your workouts and, you know, really put out high quality sprinting, high quality jumping, and all that good stuff. But anyways, that's it for now. If you wanna check out my website, I got programs, sprintingworkouts.com. Make sure to hit a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe so you can stay tuned to my future videos. But until next time, this is Cody Bidlow with sprintingworkouts.com, signing off.